Welcome back to the channel everyone, Thoughtgore here of course, and today we are going to take a look at some battle cruisers. Yeah, I know we don't have official battle cruisers in the game, right? Ships that, you know, have their own line called battle cruisers, but we definitely do have battle cruisers in the game, they're just labeled as battleships. Um, and the first one we're looking at is the Dunkirk. Now, you know, there are definitely um, a few battle cruisers that exist in the game that you know we could choose from. There's the Amagi at tier eight, the Congo at tier five, the Dunkirk, of course, here at tier six. There's a Geisnell and the Scharnhorst, both tier seven. Uh, is there any more? There's probably. I think the Mogam era, the Miyogi at tier four might actually even qualify as one, and mm, I think that might be it. Um, but anyway, oh well. Maybe the Izumo. Maybe the Izumo might be a battle cruiser, but I'm not sure on that one. Not sure on that one. But anyway, wanted to take a look at battle cruisers, talk about battle cruisers, and why I really enjoy them. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I could have done some Sharn Horse videos here as well, but I had this game. We're going to take a look at the, the Dunkirk first, and then we're going to jump over to the guys now. Um, the guys now I'm working on, and the Dunkirk, I mean, this just turned out to be a great game. Before we get too far into that, I do want to mention as well, NJ had managed to score ourselves uh, one win last night, which was fantastic. Uh, the team did very, very well indeed. Um, so we managed to pull out victory uh, over KMS. And on Friday night, we are going to fight the 7th Fleet. So I think that's going to be a little little tougher. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, we, we've got some good people here. So hopefully uh, we will prevail in the end. But anyway, back to the Battle Cruisers. On two brothers. So, battle cruisers, what you really want to do is use your speed. Uh, speed is a big advantage that you have, and typically maneuverability as well. Um, in terms of the Dunkirk, I mean, obviously, with the, the placement of the turrets, uh, you know, you yeah, you do kind of want it does lend itself to go bow on a little a uh, little more maybe than some of, some of the others, but still, you have a lot of speed, and you want to use the speed. Now, right now. Not such a great example of uh, you know what you should do in a battle cruiser, uh, because I am sailing broadside on right. Luckily, you know at the beginning of the game, no one has spotted me, so you can get away with this sort of thing at the beginning as long as you're, as you can see, in the back where I am. Um, once the enemy though does start to spot you and you do start to engage the enemy with your battle cruisers, you have to be incredibly careful um, not to show broadsides because. You, that's what makes you a battle cruiser. The fact that you don't have the same armor of a battleship, and it's the lack of this armor that allows your battle cruiser to go faster. And this was the whole idea behind um, the battle cruiser class itself. Um, I'm not going to say that the British are the ones who in, like invented it, envisioned it, but the British definitely, I would say, you know, did lead the class there um, in terms of the battle cruisers they had. And the whole idea for them was to outmaneuver the enemy battleships. It was thought that if you could outmaneuver the enemy battleships and sink all the enemy battleships, you could essentially, you know, win the country or win a nation in a day. And that's where that old saying came, you know, to lose a war in the afternoon, um, you know, adopted by a lot of admirals and, and whatnot during World War One, is that, you know, if you if you did lose your entire fleet in, in one engagement and your battle cruisers, the, you know, they were the ships that were thought that were going to do that for you. They were going to outmaneuver the enemy um, enemy battleships, and you know, and by doing so, the enemy battleships would be coming under fire from two directions. It would be they'd be engaged by your battleships and outmaneuvered by your uh, battle cruisers to fight on both sides. So there was that whole mentality. Now the I guess you know that would be more World War One, and then kind of moving into World War Two, uh, you do get this sort of with the Washington Naval Treaties and whatnot. It did limit a lot of what nations could do in terms of their um, navies and what they you know what they could produce in terms of tonnage and whatnot and specifically with the Dunkirk here I mean this Dunkirk we talked about before um, but briefly again the Dunkirk was built to sink the Deutschland class of cruisers specifically built to hunt down and destroy those cruisers um, and that's why you know the the armament was on the front and she was fast and, and you know fit into the battle cruiser class uh, so nicely but that's what, you know, she was specifically designed for this task, and that's the ship you get uh, when you have her. And here in-game, where she's represented, 
not too shabby at all. Again, we've talked about this before. The, the Dunkirk is a strong ship. But you can see so far, you know, I have really been using this, the speed to my advantage on the ship. I've been moving in and out. I've done a, basically a whole circle kind of back into my base now, just sort of hunting the enemy at this point in time. Uh, the enemy seem to have been staying, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, staying behind the island back there and using it as cover, using this whole mountain range on the port side as cover as well. Um, but still, it, you know, not too big of a deal, right? I'm still able to to get in here, fire some shots off at some unsuspecting enemy uh, ships and whatnot, do a bunch of damage. There we go. Enemy destroyer gone. Fantastic. Don't need to deal with the uh, or deal with that player or worry about that player anymore. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, again, um, I am getting a little close here as well, but you can kind of uh, get away with it every now and then, right? Keep in mind too, you do have a hit, uh, you know, a hit point pool, so you can afford some damage, uh, damage here in these. Um, random battles like this, right? It's, it's not such a big deal. Uh, one thing as well that you know you do want to utilize a whole lot on your battle cruisers too is the firepower. The firepower of the battle cruisers is usually pretty significant. Uh, maybe not the same. I mean, in the game, maybe not the same as the battleships we have, right? The battleships generally, well, the Yamagi has some pretty big damn guns. Uh, obviously, the Yamato is king, but anyway, anyway, the guns. The guns are always great as well. They fire pretty quickly, generally, um, and, you know, fairly accurate, I guess, at least in-game. Eh, fairly accurate. <laughs> I say meh, because when we get to the guys now, <laughs> oh, man, uh, we'll, guys now, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get there, but anyway, anyway, moving now, I mean, we finally did manage to cap the point, and the enemies are pretty much in a retreat, so, you know, we're just going to circle in, again, using speed to our advantage, get in here and, and see what more damage we can start dealing out, because we're only sitting on about 20,000 right now, so we definitely have the potential to do more, um, and this is something, too, actually, that I've been wrapping my mind around recently and has been making more sense, is this whole idea of but again, I caution everyone, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be pushing forward and, you know, taking your place in battle and, and pushing the line and whatnot. Um, but the idea that, you know, you, you don't have to run in and cap the, get the cap first, right? It's not about um, who's going to get the cap first, it's about who's going to hold it at the end. And, and you know, you want to be alive to be able to hold it at the end to get the points to win. Um, so if, you know, if you don't just rush into the cap, it's usually, you know, works out a little better for you because you can take your time and figure out where the enemy is going. Um, and especially in these random battles, too, because you are always going to have the people who are going to rush the cap. I mean, generally speaking, it is going to be destroyers, and the destroyers can get away with it because of concealment and whatnot. Um, but, you know, you can see cruisers and battleships rush in there as well, and then you can sort of pick them off before you even have to get in there and really, you know, knife fight with them. So the, you try and keep this in mind as well. It generally generally works out. Um, generally. <laughs> Random battles, right? Anything can happen. You never really know. Anyway, we do seem to have a pretty good hold over here on the west side. I'm not going to bother sticking around, um, right? We have a lot of allied ships over here, and if we do look at the minimap, we do notice that the enemies are, you know, pretty much destroyed the eastern force over there, and are pretty close to uh, taking a third base. So we want to go and do something and block that move from the enemy, prevent them from taking this base, and allow our people, um, our ships who are continuing to the south, allow them to take that southern base. Um, the idea here is just to stall the enemy, right? We don't even necessarily have to hold this cap. It would be good to continue to gain points from it as long as possible, but the, it's just to stall the enemy to buy our southern force time to get in there and cap that point. Um, and you know, with that sort of mentality too, you don't rush in here either, and you, you, you're not just, you know, going to throw away your ship, basically, because you really don't want to do that. You want to try and live as long as possible. Um, I, I, you know, from a cruiser captain's perspective, I'm trying to live as long as possible while taking as less or a little damage as possible, because um, I really don't, I can't, you know, take any damage uh, when you're in a cruiser. It doesn't, it doesn't add up very well. <laughs> Much like the Miyoko there off in the distance, just figured out, um, it's not really a good idea to reverse in a cruiser without cover or smoke around. It, it just generally isn't. That's an Aoba, rather, not a Miyoko. But anyway, enemy destroyer here pops up. We're going to have to deal with the enemy destroyer. Put a volley into the enemy destroyer, and you can see the enemy destroyer has very, very little health. My secondaries. Yeah, the secondaries on the Dunkirk. Here they go. <laughs> I guess this is kind of an advantage that the Dunkirk has. 
and you can you can see it here or you could see it in that instance when the Mahan was still alive <clears throat> I was able to sail away open up the distance with the Mahan right so give me because we can see torpedoes coming in give me more uh, time to actually maneuver and avoid these torpedoes while my secondaries the majority of my secondaries were firing at the enemy and they set the enemy on fire enemy burnt down I, fortunately, I didn't get the uh, um, close quarters expert flags, but whatever. I'll, you know, the kill's a kill, and I'll take it. We have this enemy Nagato coming in. Now, the enemy Nagato is a severe threat to uh, the Dunkirk. The Dunkirk can't can't really stand up to a Nagato, mm, not very well at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here as quick as I possibly can. Luckily, enemy Nagato isn't really concerned too much with me. It appears that the enemy Nagato is eyeing down my ally battleship, so I'm very low health, trying to get that kill rather than focus on me, which is great. <clears throat> I was really hoping for a lot of damage there. Didn't quite happen. <laughs> didn't quite happen, which is unfortunate, but whatever. I, I, you know, I, the Nagato didn't shoot at me. I have time to turn around, um, get myself out of this situation, and open up the distance as well. Just give myself more room to maneuver against the Nagato. You can see the Nagato's on fire quite a bit. Uh, this is my allied destroyer stepping in, right? Send the player on fire. And you can see the Nagato as well as turning in. The guns are coming towards me though, so I do definitely know Nagato is going to be firing uh, salvo at me. Unfortunately, I am going to continue to turn in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but I do still present the broadside, right? I get really lucky, real lucky there. Enemy Nagato misses entirely, so this is fantastic. Now with the, uh, the Dunkirk, well, also the uh, Allied Torpedoes coming in, obviously. But with the Dunkirk, you know, you can really see her shine here in that we can really turn in, get in close, do a bunch of damage, right? Did a pretty good amount of damage to that um, Nagato. My Allied Destroyer went in, finished him off, and then unfortunately Nagato finished off my Allied Destroyer, but whatever, there's only one enemy ship remaining. We pretty much have this. And luckily, in stalling the enemy up here at this cap, at the northern cap, we were able to kill basically all of the enemies, and uh, my allies now have the southern cap, so this went very, very well. And it, it's, a, you know, the speed and the, which provides perfect, uh, flexibility to, you know, with the battle cruisers that really allowed for all of this maneuvering around. I mean, I know I didn't go in any, you know, any big distance here, right? I basically went from the west side back to there, from the north to the west, back to the north. But I did that in pretty quick amount of time. Um, I mean, we do have quite a bit of time left on the timer as well. So, you know, it's not like um, this was slow going. And you can see this American battleship, was that? Uh, New York, it was New York. You just get caught way off in the distance out of position. This is not going to happen when you actually have speed and a battle cruiser. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, victory is ours. We do get 365,000 credits, which isn't too bad. Earn the old Confederate medal as well. 80,000 damage is pretty decent in the old Dunkirk. Uh, three Citadel hits as well, which is always pretty great. We almost got the close quarters expert, but still, two kills and we get, you know, um, some missions done for the day, so that's always great because more money is always, always what I want. <laughs> More money. Um, I do have the uh, Donskoy fully upgraded, so we're now research or saving up for the Moskva. Uh, can't wait to get the Moskva, obviously, but it's going to be a while. I mean, I've got a lot of experience to grind out on that Donsky, and um, I, you know, I probably have the credits. Probably won't be too hard to get the 20 million credits anyway. So moving on to Estuary, and we are now in the guys now. Now the guys now right now. I have the engines and I have the range increase researched. I don't have the final hull as of yet. Um, I've been thinking that I might actually keep the guys now. I think it's going to be a nice compliment to the Sharn Horse. I've already got the Sharn Horse, so why not have this as well? Uh, I think she looks fantastic. I mean, I can't wait to see what the second hull adds to it. Uh, just, you know, in terms of the aesthetics of the ship, I think that's going to look even better. Uh, back to the Donskoy, actually. The Donskoy looks amazing now with the last hull and the little radar stuff. It's, a, uh, it's great. But anyway, anyway, guys now. So a much more modern battle cruiser actually is what we see. Um, and it's crazy too to think that, I think, when did the Dunkirk enter service? It was early 30s. It was before the war began, or before World War II began. So early 30s. And the guys now entered uh, before for the war as well. Yes, she was one of the, so this would have been mid-30s. But it's crazy to see the difference in 
um, a few years, right? And I, I know it takes uh, years, you know, to go through development and prototype to actually get the final ship built and whatnot. Um, but still, it, it's crazy to think, to, for me anyway, to think um, how modern the guys now looks compared to the Dunkirk. The Dunkirk, I do find, looks dated, um, but guys now is pretty slick. Anyway, with the upgrade to the engines, we get a maximum speed of 32 knots out of this thing. Yes, cruiser speed, people. This is quick. Um, one, uh, at tier 7, it definitely is the fastest battleship. Uh, yes, because the even the Sharn Horse can only do 30 knots. 30 knots, whereas this will do 32, so fastest battleship at tier 7 is what we have here. The biggest drawback <laughs> on the guys now <laughs> that I have faced at this point in time, uh, and it's no secret, it's uh, the guns and the dispersion. They hit, it almost seems like they hit when they feel like hitting. Granted, sometimes, maybe most of the time, we have to deal with my crappy aiming. This is, you know, granted, <laughs> but... It, you know, it sometimes I'm. It just seems like I'm right on, and I've got this great shot, and they go in, and it, I mean they do straddle the enemy ship, but w normally when I say straddle, right, when a shot straddles a ship, it it comes close to hitting it. It's just the ship landed in between the two shots. In the guys now, it's like ballparks away, and that's a straddle. In the guys now, <laughs> it's it's something else. But when they do hit. They hit like a train. It is pretty good. Um, you can do some surprising things. And we're actually going to get a surprise citadel in this battle. Uh, a citadel hit on a ship that I didn't think it would be possible to do, but there it goes. I mean, I guess it is possible, obviously, because it happened if we look at the armor values and whatnot. But I'll save it for, for when it actually happens. <clears throat> on Estuary, and again, we've talked about Estuary a lot. The center is really... Um, a good point to move around in, right? We are making, ro uh, you know, push over here to the w or to the east, sorry. Um, and I'm trying to support my allies in this attempt, but <laughs> not willing to just charge right in there, right? Kind of want to stay alive here. We do have some tier 8s at play as well. We can see the North Carolina off in the distance. North Carolina can probably most likely wreck me if, you know, he landed some decent shots on me. So I don't really want to play around with North Carolina. Managed to land some shots into the North Carolina there. What was 7,200 damage? So that's not too bad. Um, pretty decent. I mean, the shots hit and they did decent damage. So that's pretty good. Uh, return fire from the North Carolina there. And you can see, you, you can tell that the guys now, you know, she doesn't really have the armor that you might think she has. Um, in certain places, anyway, right? This is where, again, where she gets her speed. It's the lack of armor. Uh, if she were to come up against a Nagato. You know, I'm not 100% sure, guys, now, V. Nagato. I think it'd be close. If it was one-on-one, -on -one, side by side, Nagato, I, you know, is going to take it, because the Nagato has the much better guns, and it's just going to rip right through guys now. But if we're talking, you know, one-on-one -on -one in the open ocean, eh, guys now might, might have a chance. I mean, we've got speed maneuverability. I think there's a lot to be said for speed maneuverability, personally. <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> Some people also call me crazy, so keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, we uh, did push around, right? We're still trying to support D. Uh, you can see I was engaging some enemies as well. Coming back down here to the south, we need to make some sort of play, but it doesn't have to be anything too hasty, because luckily our allies over there on the west, you know, they're doing well. They managed to take that point, secure the point, and look how they're deployed as well, right? Just notice it, that there's the destroyer, in the cap zone ahead of the heavier ships who are behind the cap behind cover right this is this is important stuff to keep in mind here <laughs> it's it's really not helping anyone for a battleship to just charge right into the cap and then die in the process right or lose half the pro uh, half the health right right at the beginning that that doesn't really help anyone much like having a battleship way in the back shooting at maximum range of like 20 kilometers for the entire battle doesn't help anyone either. Um, you got to really, you know, read the situation. Um, like the mini map is 
pretty small. I, I, one of the Sabim in the clan had mentioned, um, you know, the minimap is, you know, so small in your screen and whatnot, but really this minimap should be about 85% of your attention because everything is happening on the minimap. You just need to look at the minimap to see what's going on. Um, hopefully you read it properly and then, you know, make judgment from there. Anyway, we do have an enemy Colorado in our sights, and we can see some enemy ships um, pushing over here on the east as well. It almost seems like the enemies thought about whether or not they wanted to come over here to the east, and they were questioning if they should head back over to the west to defend. Um, and in the confusion, we can see that we do have enemy ships going, you know, basically in all directions. We have two enemy, or two, yeah, two enemy battleships coming at us, and then we have this enemy cruiser sailing away, so yeah, it looks pretty good for us to get in here. Um, if we can just get a destroyer right into the cap zone, or even a cruiser behind the mountain there in the cap, um, we might be able to start capping this zone. It's not crucial. We have parity at this point in time, so if we can just hold what we have, work over the enemy a little, we might be able to push a little closer. Again, the great maneuverability that a battlecruiser offers is really, really helping me out at this point. Because um, I'm able to play it much like I would a cruiser. Um, yeah, pretty much. A cruiser at range, right? I'm able to circle around, do maneuvers, make sure that I'm not uh, taking too much incoming fire. Uh, again, trying to limit as much fire as I po or as much damage as I possibly can, while dishing out as much as I can as well. Still keeping an eye on things, making sure that you know I'm ready to push in there when need be. Um, like now is a pretty decent time to push in. We're starting to cap the point. Um, we do have um, some damage dealt to the enemy uh, battle ship over there. I think it's a Scharnhorst, um, and then there's a York, but this other battleship is almost dead, so this is fantastic. If I can get a few more shots off at that enemy Scharnhorst off in the distance, then I can circle around, start heading to the north, put a little more pressure here on the enemies, and see see what how they react and what they do. Enemy Scharnhorst off in the distance, um, so we'll launch some shots off. Now, this Scharnhorst was going in a reverse, um, and I don't know, you know, some of you probably heard, um, I don't know if it's if it's official, but you know it's on. The, it's been circulated on the forums and whatnot, so it is public knowledge. You might just have to go look for it. Um, but there has been talk about uh, reworking the bows of ships uh, at tiers nine and ten, making it so that you know you, tier nine and ten bows of battleships can now be penetrated, which is going to change the meta of the game. Um, however, it's uh, let me make it clear though. You know, it's been announced that this may be happening. Uh, I stress may because I don't want to say, you know, that it because I don't know. I, I have no idea, right? I'm just going off of the, the, the thing that I read on the forums uh, to make that clear as well. But, um, you know, the, their idea is out there because tier 10 is still interesting in its play. Um, interesting maybe for the worse in its play. I mean, I, I do enjoy it. I think the economy needs more work frankly than uh, than the ships themselves that was my personal opinion but it's what i thought interesting was at least that they are looking at changing things right working with stuff to see what's going to work and so i'm excited to see what the end result is going to be um i have i have some confidence i guess that it'll be a positive overall experience once it's finally done um but still it, it yeah good to know that you know changes may be coming we do have some shots going out on the old Sharn Horse. The Sharn Horse is now sailing uh, bow on to us, and I believe the Sharn Horse is going forward again. You'll notice a lot of my shots have been missing, not only because I have a pretty narrow sh you know, sh uh, target here to actually shoot at, um, but I wasn't really able to tell whether the Sharn Horse was coming at me or sailing away from me. Uh, there is a really good mod, actually, a Running Lights mod that you can uh, have. It's uh, I think it's in Aslan's, um, and it'll show you lights you know, whether or not the ship is moving forward, backwards, uh, port, or starboard. I had it for a while, I just found the lights got eventually distracting, and I took it off. But anyway, Sharnhorst. We got a Citadel on the Sharnhorst. I was really surprised uh, to get that Citadel, because, you know, the, the shots weren't going in very well, obviously. But again, you know, totally possible, because of the 
light armor that the Sharn Horse has when compared to uh, maybe some other uh, battleships as well. And if we notice, that did go through the deck of the ship as well. Um, so there's that, right? The deck armor is always going to be a little thinner, especially <laughs> especially on these battle cruisers. Um, it's not so much there. Um, but anyway, team is doing pretty great now. You can see we are fully into our push, right? Getting in here, we have three out of four points now, so we're doing very, very well. Um, we're going to try and take down this Sharnhorst here, swing over to the west side of the map, and see what we can do about helping our allies over there in the west. Because uh, those guys did put up a pretty decent fight, right? Um, and it's the fight that they put up there that allowed us to push beyond um, our eastern point here as well. Some of those ships did die, but it wasn't all for naught. We're, we're still pushing through here as well. Um, again, we can see the crazy, crazy dispersion and, you know, my shitty aiming <laughs> in the old uh, guys now here. It is it is something else and you, you do have to have some patience with this ship. I'm excited to see because I hear, I, well, I, I don't know. I've heard a lot of crazy things about the Sharn Horse, but I have some people are saying that the, the um, this, uh, what is it? The second hull is going to decrease the dispersion or increase the accuracy. I don't quite know how that's possible, but I'm willing, you know, I, I'm going to get the second hull, obviously. So we'll, we'll see when we get there uh, what exactly it does do. Um, the guys now itself, in case um, you didn't know, I mean, I did do a German history video way back when on the channel, um, but if you didn't know, the guys now probably is most famous for its channel run um, during World War II. This was when it was leaving, it had to go through the English Channel during broad daylight, leaving French ports to get back to Wilhelmstaven. Um, the Royal Navy and the British Air Force Coastal Command really dropped the ball, and by the time they realized that it, the uh, the guys now was pushing through um, it was too late I mean the Luftwaffe was there they had air support and all this um, in fact um, some of the gun barrels the anti-aircraft gun barrels on the guys now were fired so rapidly and so often and for so long uh, that some of them actually melted uh, just completely melted from the heat <laughs> yes uh, what a crazy crazy story that was um, but anyway you know, the rest of the war, I mean, she really, she just kept getting bombed by uh, British ships. <laughs> just kept getting bombed. Anyway, you'll notice that I did take out that enemy destroyer. What I didn't realize was that I was plowing into the enemy destroyer carcass until I looked and I was like, oh, great. And this was awesome. <laughs> I'm not, whatever, I'm just going to plow through it. It's slowly sinking. It's slowing me down a little. We can tell that it's going to throw off the aim of the turpits over there off in the distance. Plus, it's great to see the power of the guys now here just power through that Fubuki. <laughs> Not too shabby at all. Anyway, we do have to deal with uh, the turpits. Not so big of a deal, though. If we look at the points, 947 points um, is where my team is at. So we've done some pretty good work this uh, this battle here. Um, if we just, you know, play it cool do a little bit more damage, it can always use a little more damage, um, but not die, we're going to take this, we, we'll have this, so not a bad game at all. Enemy turrets misses once again, which is fantastic. <laughs> you can see again, my shots go in, I hit one, which did mediocre damage, uh, and then a ricochet. All of these, uh, like any shot that the guys now lands and actually does damage, it's a miracle it seems. <laughs> it does just a miracle <laughs> but um, every now and then it lands shots right the surprise set it all in the Sharn horse was pretty great <laughs> I thought <laughs> but I'm still I'm looking forward to getting the guys now um, fully upgraded getting that last hull on her seeing what's what um, I think I'm gonna keep her and uh, buying some modules for her because there's definitely modules I think that are gonna help out the guys now a whole lot so victory overall I'm about middle of the road in the team which is not too bad at all I really played most of a mostly a supporting role in this one anyway you know the teamwork that was taking place was fantastic there was no real need well I'm not gonna say no need <laughs> but I didn't shine through as a star of the battle 
Anyway, anyway, um, that is it for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. The you know brief conversation about battle cruisers and some of the battle cruisers we have in game, um, their value, you know, maneuverability that they have. Uh, it's it's pretty fantastic. So as always, leave any comments you have for me in the video comment section below. Love reading those and responding back to them. Hit the old like button if you did like today's video. Hit subscribe if you are not a subscriber. And as always, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.